Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hammond Collection review. Today we're going to take a look at the new Ian Malcolm and Velociraptor. I haven't been this excited for a Jurassic line in a very long time. We just started with the Hammond Collection and I am already in love with this entire series. It already feels more complete than anything the Amber Collection has done. We already got a few figures in different size scales and that was the biggest issue with the Amber Collection. It felt like they were never ever going to break out of those you know, mid-sized to small dinosaurs. And we already have two large species in the Hammond Collection with the Baryonyx and Parasaurolophus. End up finding these figures at Target. A lot of us headed out to Target today because they were closed yesterday. Yes, it was the release date for Dominion figures and the Hammond collection. And both targets I hit were fully loaded. If you're going, double check the end caps. I almost walked past the end cap. They had almost all the stuff right there. The aisle was kind of empty, but they had uh, two nice displays at the two targets I went to. Some people aren't having success, but eventually the product will reach those stores. So I ended up picking up these figures today. I actually pre-ordered them uh, on Amazon yesterday too. So that is good news You know, with the Baryonyx one. At that time, the Hammond collection was just exclusive to Target. So I'm thinking that it's exclusive uh, for in-store purchase at Target because now Big Bad Toy Store has listings for them. Amazon, which means international customers are able to get their hands on these figures. And I'll also leave the link to Target and Amazon down below in the description if you want to order these figures that way. So these two figures retail for $12.99 and that is not a bad price. This is almost like uh, Mattel's version of what Hasbro is doing with the Star Wars line, the vintage collection. And I absolutely adore these figures. Uh, you know, if they keep cranking out a lot of species, and especially if you go on Big Bad Toy Store, they list it a lot today. I saw they had uh, Ceratosaurus, Dilophosaurus, Gallimimus, Dr. Ellie Sattler. Uh, looks like Mattel's ready to really go hard with this line, and that's seriously going to limit what I purchase from the main line going forward because i rather have nice, movie-accurate, highly articulated dinosaur figures instead of figures with, you know, electronic sounds and gimmicks and stuff. Now let's just go over the package really quick before we crack these figures open. First up is Dr. Ian Malcolm. I like this style of packaging a little bit better than the ones that come on the Baryonyx and Parasaurolophus. Shows off the whole figure. I felt like the uh, ones on those larger figures obstructed the figures too much. You got the Hammond logo collection down here. Dr. Ian Malcolm turned to the side. We got a nice picture of the figure with the Jurassic Park logo to tell you what movie it came from. Back of the box, picture of the figure in Ian Malcolm, how he appeared in the movie. And next up is the Velociraptor, same thing, Hammond logo collection, nice window box showing off the whole figure. Side of the box, nice picture of the figure with the Jurassic Park logo. And here is a picture of the whole figure and the Velociraptors from the movies. So that will do it for the packaging. Let's crack these open and take a closer look. And before we begin, this is just a one-time quick assembly for the Velociraptor since the tail comes unattached. You just want to line the pegs up like this, push it in till you hear it click, and that is it. Once it's in, it's not coming out. So let's start with this 360 degree view of these figures. And yes, I did buy more than one Velociraptor. I picked up two today, and I actually have a third one on its way in from Amazon. I just want you know all three Raptors that appeared in the first film and right off the bat you can see how much fun this articulation is uh ian malcolm's fantastic you know you get double jointed knees uh ankle articulation uh wrist articulation the only thing i'm really disappointed about is they did not give him double jointed elbows if hasbro can do it with their star wars vintage line uh you can do it with this line mattel i just feel, feel like that is kind of inexcusable this figure should have had double jointed elbows. Uh, as you can see, you could get some good poses out of it, but I'm really missing uh, that double jointed elbow articulation. The Raptors are great. They're basically mini versions of the Amber Collection one. Yeah, they don't have wrist articulation and they're missing like a little extra articulation on their heads, but you can see you can get these figures in some really fun positions. And yes, the feet are gigantic and oversized. I know that's gonna bother a lot of people, but it greatly helps with stability. Look, you can get one of these Raptors posed uh, in a one-legged stance, which is pretty cool. And I'm fine with the feet being that big. Would I want them to be a little bit smaller, more proportionate? Yes, but if it's gonna sacrifice stability, I'm fine with the feet being huge. And now for a couple quick measurements. Ian Malcolm is just over three and three quarter inches tall, which means he is 118 scale. And the Raptor is just about eight inches long and about 
three and a half inches tall. The height will change depending on how you have the figure posed. So the Raptors in the first film are estimated between 12 and 16 feet long. So I'll put this figure somewhere in the 118 to the 124 scale range. Now let's first take a closer look at Dr. Ian Malcolm, a really nice looking figure. I think the uh, sculpt looks a little bit better than the uh, mainline Legacy Collection one that we got a few years ago. So let's pull him in just a little bit closer. That is a nice Jeff Goldblum uh, likeness. The glasses are removable. However, if you do remove them, you do get holes on the side of his head. Uh, the glasses are really, really tiny, so you definitely don't want to misplace those. They are see-through, so you can at least see his eyes uh, in the glasses. You can see his necklace is decked out in silver paint with a little bit of blue. His shirt is half unbuttoned. You get some silver on the belt buckle. Pant legs are nicely done. You even got some silver on his boots. So yeah, all around really nice sculpt. It's nice to have him in his leather jacket. So for articulation, his head can move side to side. Not really too much up and down movement, even though it is on a ball joint. Arms can swing out, rotate 360 degrees. You get 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. And like I said, uh, it really, really needed double jointed elbows. This line is targeted for collectors. Uh, it's a highly articulated line. If Hasbro can do it with the vintage Star Wars series and give their figures double jointed elbow, so can you, Mattel. So that's a big, big missed opportunity. You do get wrist articulation. And it is on a hinge, so the hands can move up and down going down to the waist you do get some side to side movement on the waist legs can do a full split legs uh, knees are double jointed so you get a nice bend at the knees and you do get articulation at the ankles some up and down movement and you also get rotation on those ankles now this figure does come with let's get his legs down uh two sets of arms that is so you can change the appearance of your figure so what you need to do is let's zoom out but not that far you can pop his arms off so you can do a nice ray arnold impression and once you pop those off you can remove his leather jacket he didn't wear the jacket long in the movie just at the beginning of the movie when they uh came to the island and you can just peg these new arms right here to give him his short sleeve look. You just want to be careful with those pegs so you don't want to break them. Uh, they go in pretty easily and they snap in nice and secure. So there you go. You have a much different look for this figure. I like the uh, options that you can take his jacket off and give him the short sleeves. Kind of wish they did that for the Amber Collection release, but yeah, definitely a cool idea. And you can see the arms on this one are not double jointed also he does have a wrist watch on this one the hands on these arms are relaxed but you can pop these off and then take the hands off the other arms and peg them in so you have the gripping hand and the reason you need the gripping hand is because the accessory comes in lie down lie down Ian for a second uh, he does come with the row flare uh, the flare is painted this time since it's being clear red plastic. Wish they added just a little bit of white for the smoke on the flare, but not a big deal. And it can peg into his hand nice and tight. And there you go. And now that you have the jacket off, you do get a little bit more articulation. He does have a ab crunch. It's very similar to like the G.I. Joe figures with that. I guess it must be like that O-ring uh, in there. So yes, yeah, so you do get some nice articulation at the waist and please disregard later on in the review that I show this off again because I forgot to do it earlier went back to edit the video and I did not have my microphone plugged in for this part and it sounded terrible so I had to come back and re-record it and next let's take a closer look at the Velociraptor I think they did a great job in this figure that is a really nice head sculpt you know the JP1 Raptors really weren't the most colorful so it has a very simple paint job and I think it works pretty well Let's take a look at the eyes painted a nice shiny green with a black pupil. Lower jaw is cast in a lighter brown plastic. And let's look at the figure from the front. Pretty accurate looking head sculpt. The head is a little bit wide. I think that's because of the articulation. And you can see there's some nice sculpted detail on here. Now it looks like uh, these Raptors are already primed to be repainted in blue in the Raptor squad because these little osteoderms uh, on the back of the head, you know, they did not have that in the movie, but it's really minor since it's on a much smaller scale So I don't really mind it and then going down to the arms arms are nicely sculpted hand claws are painted in a nice glossy black paint You can see more of that dark brown marking on the back 
mixing in with the lighter brown plastic that the body is cast in going down to the legs the feet are absolutely huge but like i said it helps greatly with stability the sickle claw is all decked out in glossy black paint same thing with the two toe claws uh yeah you know they really are oversized i know it's gonna bug a lot of people but like i said it helps a lot with stability so i'm okay with that and then going down to the tail, a little bit more dark brown striping all the way down to the end. The rubber is a much more durable uh, feeling rubber than the one that came on the Amber Collection. I always felt that was like too spongy and the wire was going to poke through. These are a little bit harder material and I like how that turned out. But yeah, pretty, pretty cool looking Raptor figure. This is exactly what I've been wanting uh, from a Jurassic series for a long time. Nice, movie accurate, highly articulated figures. So now let's go over articulation on this little girl. You do have mouth articulation, can open up that far. And looking at it inside, you know, the teeth are not done as well as, you know, as we would like. Uh, it still looks like an inserted plate with the teeth and the tongue and the gum tissue are all painted in. You do have a pretty big cap uh, between the lower jaw and where the teeth are, but I think that's just because those bottom teeth need a spot to go. Really not that bad, but you know, I know some people are not gonna like it. You do have articulation at the head. You get some nice side to side movement, a little bit of up and down neck rotate uh, articulation as well as far down as it can look wish there was like a little better of a hinge joint in here to get a little bit more downward movement can look up that far and then going down to the arms they are on a hinge they can swing out you do get 360 degrees at that joint at the elbow you get some nice rotation and it is on a hinge so it can swivel no wrist articulation i think it might have been pretty hard to pull off since it, the wrists are so thin uh on the raptors i think if they put it in it probably would have uh, probably broke after a couple uses uh, I do miss it but it's really not a deal breaker going down to the legs you can move them forwards and backwards they're pretty tight they do have a little bit of a hinge for outward movement you get some nice knee articulation and you do have some nice ankle articulation and you can get some nice side to side movement on that little pivot in there tail you can swing side to side up and down and like i said it is made out of rubber so you can get them into different positions so yeah all in all a really neat wrap to figure you know it's only 12.99 and it has you know just like a couple points of articulation shy of the 30 dollars amber collection figure moving on with comparisons first up here it is with the old amber collection velociraptor you know when this came out it came out with an ian malcolm figure so it almost feels like the same release uh I always find it weird that they released the JP1 Raptor with Ian Malcolm since he had like basically no interaction with the Raptors in the movie. It would have been nice if it was like Grant or Muldoon, but you know, Ian's one of the most popular characters in the franchise. So I get why they would want to start the line with him. And let's just move him over to the side and bring these two a little bit closer. You can see they are very similar. Obviously the Amber Collection one is painted a little bit better because it is a larger figure and it is a little bit more expensive. But I think they did a pretty good job of shrinking down uh, you know, the Amber Collection figures for these little Hammond Collection ones. And next up here is Ian's old uh, figure release. You can see the new one is definitely much better looking. I like how the glasses are see-through. They were just too dark on here. You could not see uh, Malcolm's eyes, but they are very similar. But this one definitely looks a little bit more premium and refined. And now that I'm looking at it, since I got the jacket off, I definitely miss the uh, waist articulation on this figure. And it is on a joint, so you could get some backwards and forward crunches on that. Sorry that I missed that earlier. And next up here is the Raptor that comes with the Kitchen Encounter Pack. Uh, like I said, I have no reason ever to pick up a JP1 Raptor in the main line again because of these Hammond Collection ones. They are right now my definitive Raptors in my collection. And here it is with the Hammond Collection. Barry on it, which is another amazing figure. The only one I still need is the Paris Aralophus. I have not found one in the store. I do have one on pre-order uh, from Target, but it hasn't shipped yet. So hopefully I'll get that my hands on that figure relatively soon. And next up, here it is with the Th Dominion Therizinosaurus, which I had to take the batteries out. Uh, it was seriously driving me nuts. Every single time I touched this figure, it just would go off. But yeah, another great, great looking figure. I just like how the Hammond Collection, it just has great synergy with the mainline figures. And lastly, here it is with the new 
Dominion T-Rex. And we are getting a Hammond Collection Rex. Uh, Big Bad Toys are actually listed. Uh, looks like it's going to cost around $50. And if it's this size and it's fully articulated, that is going to be a hell of a deal. Hopefully, the paint scheme uh, matches Rexy pretty closely. Because once I get my hands on the Hammond Collection one, I'll have no need to buy another mainline Rexy ever again. So final thoughts on these new Hammond Collection figures. They are absolutely excellent. 100% worth that $12.99 price. They're so much fun to mess around with. I love all that articulation, uh, you know, movie accurate sculpts, paint jobs. It's exactly what I've been wanting in a Jurassic line forever now. And Mattel is finally delivering. Like, I'm serious. I am so hyped for this line. I can't wait to see all the neat stuff they have in store for us. And, you know, the Raptor figure is just a ton of fun. It's probably going to get repainted a million times in the blue. The Raptor Squad, JP3 Raptor, Lost World Raptors. And I'm fine with that because, you know what, the $12.99, I can definitely do some, uh, you know, pack building with them because they're not 30 bucks a piece. So I can see these figures disappearing off shelves pretty quickly because everyone's probably going to want at least three in their collection. The only negative I have to say is I just wish Ian came with double jointed elbows. You know, the rest of the figure has all that modern articulation and it's just a huge missed opportunity that he just has single jointed elbows. Other than that, both are great figures, highly recommended. And like I said at the beginning of the review, links are down below in the description if you want to order from Target or Amazon, which is good news. It's not fully a Target exclusive anymore, which means most people will be able to get their hands on these awesome figures. So that will do it for the review. I still have a ton of Dominion stuff I need to review, so you can be seeing a lot of that on the channel. Uh, I'll sprinkle in some non-Jurassic stuff in between. I got some... Uh, new figures from Collect Day that I really need to do reviews on, so stay tuned for those. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously, and it's greatly appreciated, and I'll see you guys for the next one.